Hi, I'm Annie. I'm Lars, and we're back. Episode 2, Playing with Prologue. Hey, what topic are we talking about today? Job scheduling. At work, I'm in charge of our continuous integration server. It runs tests on every single commit that comes into the repository. I wanted to distribute the load across multiple servers using Prologue. Every commit triggers a set of independent jobs, and each job has to be scheduled for one of the nodes. How many of these nodes do you have? Three physical servers, each of them represents a node. One of them can actually run four jobs in parallel, though, because it's a very big machine. Some jobs have to run on Linux, and some can run on any platform. To implement a job schedule on Prolo, we can first declare our existing nodes, their capacity, and their operating system. So, the operating system is used as a tag to select which server can run a job? That's right. But so far, this code doesn't do anything. How do you keep track of which jobs are running in which node? We are going to use two other predicates for that, job ID and running. We are going to dynamically update Prolog stack base to reflect the current allocation. We use dynamic predicates so we can change them at runtime, like SQL insert and delete. We have to warn Prolog you are going to change a predicate at runtime. The dynamic directive does this. The running predicate declares that some job is running on a particular node. So by querying which jobs are running on which node, uh, we know how much capacity is still available. Indeed, the current jobs predicates finds all the jobs on one node. Current capacity abstracts these from the capacity of the node and computes the number of remaining slots. Can we try that out? Sure. In the empty state, all the nodes still have their assigned capacity. If we assert a single job, the capacity decreases by one. So, when we want to schedule a job, we need to find a node that still has an available slot. The node must also have the correct tag. This is what the next predicate is going to do. Find available is non-deterministic. We can pass in a tag and it will instantiate a second argument to any suitable node. That makes sense. There might be several suitable nodes after all, and the job doesn't care about the precise machine it's being run on. The running predicate records that some job is running, but if we have a machine that has multiple slots, we need to distinguish jobs from each other. Right. New Prolog programmers often get caught this way. You can't have duplicate facts. We have to distinguish the jobs. This is why we introduced the identifier. It is initialized to zero, and there is a predicate that gives us the next number. So we have a global mutable counter. I guess so. It's just a non-negative integer that gets monotonically increased. We haven't seen how we actually schedule a job so far. Right, we haven't. We have all the pieces, now we just need to line them up. It's quite simple now. The schedule predicate takes a tag and will instantiate a handle. What's a handle? Oh, that's just a tuple of the node that will run the job and the job ID it got assigned. We will just use the running predicate. The schedule predicate does just three things. It finds a free node, creates a new ID, and schedules the job on that node. Is it that simple? Almost. There's a slight problem. Because of backtracking, the prolog interpreter will try to schedule the job on all the free nodes if we're not careful. Can we fix that? Yes, we can place a cut after the backtracking predicate. It will disable backtracking locally. When the interpreter reaches it, it will not backtrack to find new instantiations. Let me retract and retry it. That works better now. Indeed. Of course it is not as feature-rich as real-world systems, but it can be extended easily from here. This is neat. If you enjoyed this episode of Playing with Prologue, please like and subscribe. It does help. And keep playing with Prologue.